Prompt Obedience It is common to hear people say, I've prayed to God countless times, but it's almost like God doesn't hear me. A lot of people that desire the manifestation of the supernatural sometimes fail to realize that God responds to our prayers, most times with an instruction, an instruction of what we must do to see our desires come to pass. So what do we do to those instructions? We respond quickly and promptly. Prompt response means a timely adherence to anything God's Spirit lays on our heart to do. Let's examine this story in John 5, 1. Later on, there was a Jewish feast, festival, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Jewish Aramaic, Bethsaida, having five porticos, alcoves, colonnades. In these porticos lay a great number of people who were sick, blind, lame, withered, waiting for the stirring of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down into the pool at appointed seasons and stirred up the water. The first one to go in after the water was stirred was healed of his disease. There was a certain man there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus noticed him lying there, helpless, knowing that he had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to get well? The invalid answered, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am coming to get into it myself, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet and walk. Immediately the man was healed and recovered his strength and picked up his pallet and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. Note Jesus said, Get up, pick up your pallet and walk. Jesus didn't try to help him. He only told him what to do to walk again. Some people would say Jesus was being inconsiderate and even downright wicked to those he wanted to help because the condition of the man was pitiable. Why make it worse with instructions? But Jesus doesn't work by the way humans feel. He does his work in us when we obey his instructions in faith. Let's examine another story in John 9:1. While he was passing by, he noticed a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed and illustrated in him. We must work the works of him who set me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world, giving guidance through my word and works. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva, and he spread the mud like an ointment on the man's eyes. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated, sent. So he went away and washed, and came back seeing. So the neighbors and those who used to know him as a beggar said, is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Still others said, No, but he looks like him. But he kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made mud and smeared it on my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and I received my sight. We see that Jesus also instructed the blind man to go to the pool called Siloam to wash off the mud, which is a mixture of saliva and sand from his eyes. Another instruction to a man born blind. But Jesus, how will the blind man get to the pool since you know that he can't see? Let's also examine what transpired in John 2, 1. Even Jesus' mother knew that he would give them a responsibility to participate in the miracle he was about to perform. So she said what he tells you to do, do it. We have often created a false persona of Jesus in our minds, of a God that is a lot like Santa Claus, or a magician. But from scriptures, we see that he desires even the seeming helpless amongst us to be responsible. He wants us to be people that are obedient to his instructions and respond promptly to faith. To see the supernatural, he desires our participation, obedience, faith, and response. We live in a society where people have a serious sense of entitlement to what others have and want to do nothing to have it. 
These days, it is normal to see people that do nothing but want everything. Prayer is communication between God and man. That means it goes two ways. We speak to God and God speaks to us in return. After speaking to God, we must do our best to listen to what He will say to us in response to our prayers. Because it is His response which we obey that changes happen. Even fasting and praying without obeying God are merely fruitless religious activities that will leave us in the same spot, making us wonder why God does not respond. But in the real sense, it is lacking of obedience or prompt response that keeps us from being transformed. Let's look at some verses that show us how much God delights in our obedience. Number 1. Exodus 19, 5, AMP says, Now therefore, if you will in fact obey my voice and keep my covenant, agreement, then you shall be my own special possession and treasure from among all peoples of the world, for all the earth is mine. Number 2. Deuteronomy 28, 1. Now it shall be, if you delightly listen to and obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments, which I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Yes, grace came with Christ, but grace can't take the place of obedience. 1 Corinthians 3, 21, KJV says, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. All things are ours in Christ. However, it takes obedience of faith to his word for us to receive what has been freely given to us. It is also important to note that instructions can come as corrections, also because when we do things our own way instead of his own way, we go backwards. But when we obey his instruction or correction, then we see his hand at work all around us. When we disobey God, we subconsciously shuts him out. Abraham is known as the father of faith, the one who received generational blessings because of his constant obedience of faith and prompt response. Let's look at the different instructions that came to him and how he obeyed promptly every time. First instruction, Genesis 12, 1. Now in Haran, the Lord has said to Abram, Go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you abundantly, and make your name great, exalted, distinguished, and you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others, and I will bless, do good for, benefit, those who bless you, and I will curse, that is, subject to my wrath and judgment, the one who curses, despises, dishonors, has contempt for you, and in you all the families, nations of the earth will be blessed, so Abraham departed in faithful obedience, as the Lord had directed him, and Lot, his nephew, left with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. It must have been tough to just God depart from the life that he was used to, but he did and never regretted that step, because God only leads forward. Second Instruction Genesis 13, 17 Arise, walk around in the land, through its length and its width, for I will give it to you. Then Abram broke camp and moved his tent and came and settled by the grove of the great Terebinths, oak trees of Mamre, the Amorite, which are in Hebron. And there he built an altar to honor the Lord. Third instruction, Genesis 15 AMP. And the Lord brought Abram outside, his tent into the night and said, Look now towards the heavens and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, So numerous shall your descendants be. Then Abram believed and affirmed, trusted, relied on, remained steadfast to the Lord. And he counted, credited it to him as righteousness, doing right in regard to God and man. And he said to him, I am the same Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as an inheritance. But Abram said, Lord God, by what proof will I know that I will inherit it? So God said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So Abram brought all these to him and cut them down the middle and laid each half opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds. The birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. Fourth Instruction 
Genesis 17. Further, God said to Abraham, As for you, your part of the agreement, you shall keep and faithfully obey the terms of my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is the sign of my covenant, which you shall keep and faithfully obey between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins. And it shall be the sign, symbol, memorial of the covenant between me and you. Every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations. Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all the servants who were born in his house and all who were purchased with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's household, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin the very same day, as God had said to him. So Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised. Fifth Instruction Genesis 22 AMP Now after these things God tested the faith and commitment of Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he answered, Here I am. God said, Take now your son, your only son of promise, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood and bound Isaac his son and placed him on the altar, on top of the wood. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, Here I am. The Lord said, Do not reach out with the knife in your hand against the boy, and do nothing to harm him. For now I know that you fear God with reverence and profound respect, since you have not withheld from him. Me your son, your only son of promise. Then Abraham looked up and glanced around, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering, ascending sacrifice instead of his son. So Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. And it is to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be seen and provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, By myself, on the basis of who I am, I have sworn an oath, declares the Lord that since you have done this thing and have not withheld from me your son, your only son of promise, indeed I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed like the stars of the heaven and like the sand on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies by conquering them. Through your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have heard and obeyed my voice. Most believers love the blessing that God put as a seal on Abraham, but we have also got to love his heart that obeyed constantly because it was his consistent prompt obedience that brought him into God's sworn blessings. Let us pray. Thank you, Abba, for showing me that in our relationship I will have to be an active participant by obeying your leading, correction, and instruction. Today, I draw grace from your Holy Spirit to pray and listen for your response knowing that it is obedience to that response that will bring the changes I desire. In Jesus' name, thank you for answers, Lord.